Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Selesnia Harmony. Welcome back, everybody, to It Resolves, and yes, I am back this time for good. Uh, I know it's been a bit of a crazy month. I haven't been in action for quite a while. Unfortunately, work has been very, very demanding. Uh, just had a couple conferences, things like that, that really took over. Uh, perfectly reasonable. Obviously, that's just the real world stuff. Uh, but thankfully, John, as always, has been amazing. Uh, and so a huge thank you to John and as well you guys for supporting John. John, as he has been kind of taking over for the month of September. John, you can take a break, my man. I do appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, and it's great to be back. I'm really, really excited for it. Hopefully this means John's freed up again to kind of focus on those live streams. Uh, but his videos have been doing amazing. So again, thank you guys so much for that support. Uh, today, I wanted to actually adopt kind of John's principle of taking a deck uh, that you see somewhere else and then making just a couple of small changes and then giving it a test run. And so today we're taking a look at a Selesnya enchantments list, but it's a bit of a different vibe. This one is looking to really go off with Rite of Harmony, uh, which if you don't know, says whenever a creature or enchantment enters the battlefield under your control this turn, you actually get to draw a card. Uh, very interesting card and very powerful indeed, especially with things that cheapen up your deck like Jukai Naturalist. Uh, now, one of the things I want to mention here is the original list was created by Legend VD. I will link his list down below. I made two small changes that I felt might be needed. Uh, and I might be wrong here, but I feel like it's worth trying out. So first and foremost, I took out two of the teachings of the Kirin and replaced them with two Touch the Spirit Realm. One thing I noticed in the original list, the only main way to really remove anything was with the fall of Lord Conda. I think this is very reasonable and a very good card, but Touch the Spirit Realm gives us another opportunity to kind of get rid of anything that we see fit onto the battlefield and hopefully continue that pressure. Uh, we also can channel this and exile an artifact or creature, return it to the battlefield under its owner's control. So if we need to, you know, play a little defensively or something along those lines, we certainly can. Uh, but the idea is pretty simple. I just felt like we needed a little more removal. The other thing I did was actually take two Blossoming Sands out, uh, removing just a couple points of life gain, and instead replace them with Botanical Plaza. This just gives us card draw. That's the only thing. Now, card draw is not something I'm expecting us to really sacrifice from, uh, simply because we do have that Rite of Harmony, as well as the Spirited Companion, of course. Uh, however, I do feel like it's important to have. Uh, it's a nice little out as well well just in case uh, having that extra card draw never never hurts so uh, other than that, the, the deck is very much built around sagas and capitalizing on those sagas again with Rite of Harmony and then of course Hallowed Haunting. Uh, we do have Katilda in here as a big payoff, of course. And then everything else really works in tandem to hopefully be able to s just throw things out onto the field as quickly as we can. The teachings, uh, Azusa's Many Journeys allows us to play an additional land on each of our turns, which is quite nice. Uh, so as we play these and hopefully draw more off of the Rite of Harmony, we've gotten out for actually playing some of the cards in our hand uh, and then wedding announcement gives us some card draw some creatures as well as that hollowed haunting so very interesting deck here i'm excited to try this one out i actually haven't yet this is going to be a brand new first for me so we'll give this one a shot legend vd thank you so much my friend i do appreciate you sharing and guys it's great to be back let's see what we can do today all right, guys, and here we are for game number one. How do we feel about this hand? I don't love it, I'll be honest. We're missing quite a lot of the early game. Uh, that being said, is it worth just handing? Uh, I think I'm gonna mulligan. As much as I don't necessarily want to, I feel like this is probably the right call. I think here we can throw a land down. As much as I love having the Asuzas mini journeys, of course. Uh, and being able to capitalize on those. I do expect that we'll be able to draw some extra lands here. Uh, opponent not doing too much. So this actually works great for us. So we get to drop the Azusa's Many Journeys, play that tapped land, and now we are just a little bit ahead of our opponent who looks like they didn't really have much to go off of anyway, uh, which is just great for us. So, um, all right, so uh, now we actually have some options. So we could touch the Spirit Realm on this. I don't actually know that we have to quite yet, to be honest. Um, let's throw this out. Again, they are very stuck on land, so I'm pretty happy to just be able to do this. 
I'm gonna go ahead and Spirited Companion. And you're seeing just how powerful this can be. Ooh, wish we had done that first. It would have been better to get the Blossoming Sands down here, but that's okay. Uh, you're seeing just how powerful this can be. I mean, we are really, really taking off here. They only have the Evolved Sleeper, and we have got quite a lot of lands. Uh, and two relatively good things coming down here. So this should be pretty good. Uh, the question is, do we want to sacrifice to draw a card? Uh, I think sure. <laughs> And we're already seeing the payoff of having that in the deck, right? Just being able to draw a card in a position where you really don't need to do too much else, I think is perfectly fine. Uh, and so I'm I'm very happy with that. We'll see what the opponent is going to do here. It looks like they're just going to commit some mana into the Evolved Sleeper. Uh, chances are just going to have to discard, I assume. Looks like they are not drawing lands. I'm very surprised they kept a one lander. Uh, in this scenario. That doesn't seem necessarily very good. Alright. Uh, so, first things first. I think we can attack and just allow them the block if they want it. If they don't, great. It's perfectly fine by me. Uh, we will drop a land. We'll drop the restoration here. Uh, this is nice because we do get to deck thin just a little bit. Uh, which is always a good thing. And again, I'm not really over committed to the touch the spirit realm if they over invest here uh it just makes this so much better um and so i'm not really concerned about uh about them investing mana into that evolved sleeper at this point and there we go we got the win i'm fortunate that the opponent only had one land but <clears throat> it is what it is that happens so game number one is a win let's move to game number two this month's Patreon Rewards features the amazing tutor pack with some of the most powerful tutors in Magic's history. If you'd like to learn more or sign up today, please visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash it resolves. All right, guys, and here we are for game number two. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is a keep. We definitely need some more lands, of course, but uh, this actually cheapens up a lot of our deck. And so as long as we can keep that on the field, I'm not feeling too badly about this. Uh, guys, as we are jumping into game two, I just want to mention a couple things. First and foremost, like I said, it was a very busy month, unfortunately. Uh, and as such, I really didn't get as much done this month as I was hoping to. I do appreciate that everybody was so supportive and so kind, uh, in making sure that, you know, I felt like it was okay, it wasn't a big deal, nothing like that. And I really do appreciate that. It means a lot that you guys were so supportive. Uh, one thing I do want to mention, um, I was in Orlando during the time of Hurricane Ian. Uh, I thankfully got out just before. Uh, it was a bit of a dramatic time, but I was able to get out. Thankfully, it wasn't that big of a problem. Uh, and so all in all, I just want to say if you happen to be in that area or any area indeed affected by Hurricane Ian, I feel for you. <laughs> it was scary. I was terrified, uh, truthfully. I have never been in that kind of position where a hurricane is like right around the corner and that was a very scary place to be. And so I just want to, you know, extend my sincere, like, I, I, I hope everybody in your family, if you happen to have people in that area, uh, I hope everybody is okay. I hope that you guys were able to get out if you were able to get out or at the very least, uh, you know, board up and be safe. Um, it was certainly a tricky time, in my opinion, for a lot of people and including myself. And so I, I feel for you guys. Um, but all in all, I am very happy to say that uh, I'm back. I'm back. Finally. Uh, I really miss you guys. I miss being here. Uh, it's weird to be here and like be recording again just because I haven't been able to for so long. And so this is this is really just kind of getting back to the grind, and I am so stoked uh, to, to be back. I've got a lot of great ideas. Uh, John, again, has been instrumental in keeping us going, uh, which has been absolutely phenomenal. Uh, I think we just block here and here. I'm assuming they're about to sweep. I, I don't really see why they wouldn't. Uh, truthfully, I think the safer play might have just been to block with the two tokens, but this is fine. Um, but anyway, I just want to say again, guys, I really do uh, wish you all the best. I hope everybody's okay. Oh no, we froze. All right, be right back. All right, we're back. I have no idea exactly what happened there, but uh, thankfully it's fine. We are here. I'm going to go ahead and play the Hollowed Haunting. Uh, not sure exactly why that happens, but every once in a while my game will just completely like lock up and craziness ensues. But that is okay. Let's see what we can do this time around. Looks like they're going to get the reflection down. I'm sure they'll just maybe attack in or just suit up the... Yeah, they could suit up. 
Okay, they're just gonna draw. Looks like they're kind of stuck on land too. For a deck like this, I, I kind of would imagine a little bit more, um, but that's fine. Do we actually block? I don't know that we do. I don't think I care that much about this. Um, maybe I do, and this is the bad call, but like, I think we can kind of just keep pressuring. My, my worry is like, if they don't have a meat hook massacre, like that's not gonna do it this turn. So I'm, I'm just kind of assuming that uh, they really don't have a whole lot there. Um, so one thing we can do is just drop this, which will basically power these guys up quite a bit. Alternatively, we could just play Katilda. Also not bad. Um, I'm gonna try, we should have attacked first, I suppose, but I'm gonna try and throw the Katilda down, expecting that they will have a removal spell. This is a pretty removal heavy deck. So I'm not super surprised, but this does power up here. So I guess that was kind of the right call. All right, cool. Um, let's attack in here, fully expecting that they'll have a removal spell and maybe trade off for the reflection. Um, but I think this is perfectly fine. The nice thing about hollowed haunting is when you do get it down and it sticks, it's like kind of difficult for them to really play around it too heavily unless they just straight up remove one of them. Uh, and so far they've not been able to do so. Sure, I will trade a 2-2 a fairly expendable creature for a reflection any day. Uh, this also takes them uh, crewing up the bank buster off the table, at least as of right now. Sure, you can attack in, that's fine. Again, we are kind of playing a fine line by allowing this to stick around. This is not necessarily the best move in the world in my opinion, but uh, it should be okay. We'll see. Um... There it is. I was looking for it. Yep. Perfectly fine. Uh, annoying, but fine. That's not the end of the world. Um, I would rather them go ahead and get that down now, honestly. So let's go ahead and Jukai Naturalist. We'll get two little guys out. We'll also get the Restoration of Iganjo out. Uh, this is going to get another land. And this is kind of what we were waiting for, was for them to really commit to a good solid play like the Meat Hook Massacre. And now... If they don't have a follow-up meat hook, they are kind of out of luck here. Um, because we do have another Katilda that can drop down, as well as just the, the Rising Dawn, which is obviously kind of ridiculous. So, we'll see. <coughs> nice! Okay. So at the beginning of your incep, choose one that hasn't been chosen. I have not played against this card yet, funny enough. Uh, exile and return. Okay. This should be fun. Uh, I don't think it's really going to matter. I think we're kind of ahead of the game at this point. Um, but, you know, it's it's good. I'm sure they just deal three, yeah, to the naturalist here. Sure. Seems perfectly reasonable, but truthfully, I don't think it's really going to matter. <laughs> uh, that's really good. Um, I will discard Katilda so we can get something else back here. Uh, I think we'll just get you back, actually. <laughs> We can already play one of these, and we're not going to play two, obviously, so I'm not all that concerned about it. We got another land. I will take it. Let's go ahead and drop this on here. They are out of mana, so, like, this seems relatively safe. <laughs> <coughs> Excellent. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think we did it. Um, just go ahead and attack with all. <laughs> oh, I love that. Um, that was really sick. This deck is fun, man. Legend VD, you did a really good job throwing this deck together. Uh, I am happy that we made at least the two small changes we made actually do seem to be semi-relevant. The card draw in that first game wasn't a ton, but it, it's something, and I don't think you're looking for a ton of value off of it. I think it's one of those where if you have the mana and you've got the opportunity, you draw a card. And so for me, that's more, more valuable than one life is essentially the takeaway. Um, on top of that, I would say Touch the Spirit Realm in any given situation is just a nice little catch-all uh, for the most part. It's not always great, don't get me wrong, it's not a perfect card, but it just adds that little bit of, hey, I've got an out uh, to, you know, this little 5-5 five -five guy. If I didn't have these hollowed hauntings, that would be a relatively scary threat. And so I want to be able to, you know, remove that if I need to, or deal with some other big thing or whatever it might be. And, and this just gives me options. So I feel like those are reasonable enough changes, 
all in all, I don't think the deck needed a ton. Um, but I like this. I like this a lot. Uh, it looks like the opponent is just going to wait it out. <laughs> Which is fine. Guys, thank you again. It has been so good to be back. I am really, really stoked. I'm ready to jump back into recording. I'm ready to jump into some new stuff. Uh, John and I need to catch up today, and uh, we've got some really exciting things in the works that I'm working towards hopefully getting ready to go soon. Uh, it, it will be really, really fun to hopefully get there. And so uh, I, I've got some stuff in the background that I'm really excited about that hopefully we'll see happen soon. And there we go, guys. We got the win. Ah, man. Coffee's delicious. Two for two, guys. Let's move into a game three. Let's see how we do. All right, guys, here we are for game number three. And yeah, I think this is pretty easy keep. Uh, what's nice about this is, again, that Asusa's mini journeys, it just allows us the opportunity to get an extra land down and hopefully ramp into that hollowed haunting a turn early. Even if we don't here, we've got the restoration, which is going to pull an extra land for us for that hollowed haunting. It just gives us the options, you know what I mean? Like we, oh, and there we go, perfect. So this is a turn three hollowed haunting which is certainly, I think, going to be the plan here. We want to get that down, I think, as quickly as possible. Uh, it also is just a better turn three play than I think either of these two, uh, pretty clearly. I mean, I mean, Restoration is good. Hollowed Haunting is, I think, just better. <laughs> um, now, it looks like Azorius is the move here. Probably going to be a bit of a control -y style deck, which... It's not exactly what we want to be against, but what's nice is they did tap out, allowing us that Hollowed Haunting this turn, which just means that next turn we can drop Jukai Naturalist, and then if we draw a land, maybe the Restoration, if we don't, the Spirited Companion, and get double activation here. So that's quite nice. Anointed Peacekeeper, definitely annoying, so this might actually be less of a control deck and more of just a kind of Mono White Prison-y style deck. Sure, they're gonna name Restoration, that's fine. Uh, don't particularly mind. I don't love it, of course, but that's fine. Opponent playing very, very well, tapping this down to uh, allow that. Wow, and they nailed two cards, basically, with it. That was really solid on their part. All right, let's go ahead and Jukai Naturalist. Uh, <clears throat> let's make sure we get that Spirited Companion down. Hopefully drawing a land here. I think that would probably be our best draw. Yep, there we go. There is some consideration to keeping this, but considering we've got double restoration in hand, I think it's just better that if they remove the naturalist, we have the option of playing the restoration regardless. Uh, and, you know, obviously we are trying to commit quite a bit right now, uh, given that they only have the, the Peacekeeper and the Bank Buster. <coughs> Excuse me. Curious to see what they d decide to do this turn. They could certainly crew up and attack in, but it looks like they're not planning to. That's interesting. Um, okay. I think we just play Restoration first uh, because that does power up these tokens, which is certainly a good place to be. Um, and I'm curious to see how this ends up panning out here. All right. So. Do get a couple three threes now. Um, we will obviously pull a land from the deck, which is just going to deck thin us once again. That's kind of just relatively important for the deck. Now the question is, what, if anything, do we attack with? And I think we will. Um, I don't see a reason not to. Uh, becomes block, blocked, untap up to three lands. So if they decide to block the Seeker, it's fine. This I don't care about. Again, this is a perfectly fine play. Uh, and actually this works out better for us. <laughs> in the long term because now we get to play another restoration uh and so this is this was the the calculated risk side of things <coughs> excuse me uh because now we get to play a restoration and we get extra tokens extra everything so this just seems perfectly fine and there we go they were not aware of double restoration that i'm i i believe that's correct so i think that was great cool uh, Sarah Paragon, normally a very scary card. In this board state, a little less worried about it, I'll be honest. <laughs> um, I don't think it's all that exciting. Um, I'm going to discard a land that will allow us the Azusa's many journeys. Great. Um, I'll discard the Azusa's many journeys and play it. Uh, technically, I'm wondering... 
whenever you cast. So technically, we messed up there a little bit. We should have discarded lands, um, but that's okay. We should not have played or discarded this Azusa. We should have played that Azusa's mini journeys. That would have allowed us the opportunity of uh, getting a little bit more going, but we do have all flyers now, which is quite nice. <coughs> Excuse me. Coughing a lot today and I don't like it. I think allergies, man. I don't know if anybody else is in that boat, but allergies have been killer lately, it feels like. So we are gonna gain some life next turn as well, which is quite nice. So these all have vigilance as well, which is just doubly good. Um, they can't block with the Reckoner Bank Buster, so this is just kind of an easy push. Um, okay, that does nothing. Uh, and we win. <laughs> they messed up. They should have just blocked with the Sarah Paragon. All right, well, guys, we did it. That's an undefeated run. Uh, I am very, very happy to say that was an undefeated run. That was a sick set of games. Guys, let's, uh, let's chat about this deck. All right, guys. So first and foremost, again, I just want to say a huge thank you to Legend VD creating the original list, which again will be linked down below only made a small couple of changes here, including a little bit more removal and a little bit more card draw, nothing major, because I don't think this needed it. What we didn't get to see was the Rite of Harmony play, really getting to capitalize on the fact that you play Rite of Harmony and then are able to draw quite a number of cards to keep you going and fuel the next uh, turn or so uh, of the game. We didn't need it. To be honest, I mean, the reality is we were able to take over the game without actually even having the right of harmony at any point in any of these three games. I may rename the deck in the actual video title because I don't think it's necessarily fair to call it a harmony deck if we didn't get to the right of harmony. But truthfully, this was the first time I played the, get, the, the deck. We went through three games back to back to back and we won all three games. This was an undefeated run. For anybody that says otherwise, I don't care. Man, I got tired of uh, dealing with all you people, so I don't really care anymore. Uh, truthfully, I'm just really happy that this deck worked as well as it did. Legend VD, again, did a phenomenal job. Guys, it's great to be back. I am really excited to be back. I'm really excited to jump back into gameplay videos as well as some other stuff. Do stay tuned on the channel. We'll have a lot of exciting things coming, hopefully very soon for you all. But until the next video, guys, thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. I'm back. We'll see you guys again soon. <laughs>